Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 32. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom, and of the fields of Gomorrah, their grapes are grapes of gall, their clusters are bitter. So Shalom, giving all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechakodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the Akiyam out there doing the work of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, in truth, faith, and in sincerity. Okay, it's Brother Tazapah here with another lesson, and uh, this kind of ties in with the lesson from yesterday in which I was dealing with Joel Osteen and him saying that the moles, you uh, you could be a mole and still be accepted into heaven. So this lesson kind of ties into it, and I have a caption here from a Denise DeWald MD, okay, a quote from her, Denise DeWald. MD, and this comes courtesy of the elder brother, Yashawamba. So, uh, you know, much love to that brother. And uh, you see what it says. It says, once the impox is detectable in the wastewater, it's game over for eradication. The sewers are swarming with rats. It will become epidemic. We will need to resume universal uh, vaccines against the 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 S pox slash M pox. M pox has been found in the wastewater in San Francisco. So, you know, and everybody knows it's like San Francisco is basically like, you know, if this was back in the day, Frisco would basically be Gomorrah or, or either Sodom. You know, and um, I don't know what other city would compare because all of America has become fitting of its title as spiritually Sodom and Egypt pursuing to Revelation 11 and 8. But uh, yeah, San Francisco is way up there. So, you know, here is a um, disease, a virus, this impox, which the narrative of it of this outbreak is it started with among the moles the exact same narrative of the uh the hivades of the late 80s the exact same mo so uh yeah it would be found in the wastewaters of frisco you know but uh yeah this could pose a major problem but this was prophesied okay and so uh, i'm gonna play a quick clip and then we're going to hit these scriptures. All right. And Wesley Wallace says he's been dealing with monkeypox for three weeks now, and it's not over yet. We want to warn you, this illness is graphic in nature, and we do not want to hide the severity of some of its symptoms. But you should know some of these images are hard to watch. Wesley Wallace says just being awake it hurts to exist is excruciating as you can see from the time it started it's just progressed and gotten worse and worse it's right there on his face what he first thought was just a pimple I was like oh god please not me please not me soon turned out to be monkeypox eight different lesions on his chin even one inside his mouth every sip every bite it, it's just like, oh, I can't, I can't, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts. And it's spreading. Now random little lesions are starting to appear on my body. So you one on my hand, uh, there's one, there's one here, like there on my wrist. Wallace thinks he caught the virus at a bar July 4th weekend. I'm going to say I probably was kissing somebody that had it and didn't know it, um, just based on where my initial lesions pop up. But says access to the vaccine. There's a huge high risk population that is just hungry for the vaccine and they can't they don't have access to it has been so scarce his friends are leaving the state to get it i have friends that are actually buying airline tickets flying to other cities just to go get the vaccine and then come home he says along with the pain and the symptoms can come isolation the thing is you look at it and it's such an 
ugly virus. You know, you look at it, you just recoil, and you're like, oh, I don't want to be anywhere near that. I knew the stigma that might come with it, but I also know that lots of people are facing that stigma. He has support, but wants others to know they're not alone. Just let them know that they're not some kind of pariah, that they're not dirty. If you see something, say something. All right, so much love to the brother GMS Watchman. This is his video titled, The Impox is Nasty and Real. And so you see this guy, he's clearly flaming and he has this, this disease. Now, going back to the lesson I did yesterday, I actually ended that lesson with Romans chapter one. And I started at 26. I went into the 26th and the 27th verse or verses of Romans chapter one, which talks about the recompense of their error that was meat, okay? And so what you see, and again, it's just a narrative that was put out there that this is happening among the most, but that's actually judgment from the most high. And who knows, um, you know, all the implications, the implications of this or even what that is. They're, they're terming it that, you know, the impacts, it looks like that, but it could be, a variation. It could, we, we're in the time of um, great judgment. So, yeah, a lot of what you're seeing with you, you, you hear about just random killings, people being put to death, people dropping dead, people catching these different uh, viruses. Hey, this is our judgment from the most high. And that ain't to say that just because you get sick or come down with something that, um, you know, that's judgment from the most high because, you know, we're all in this atmosphere of sickness. But, um, yeah, the people that you see dying these horrific deaths or getting that type of stuff right there, that's the most high. You know, because they're blaming it on an uh, unclean act that these these moles engage in is due to the unclean act. So, um. Uh, yeah, the scripture I started off with, we're going to kick it off and just go into that. All right. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 32. It says, for their vine is of the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are the grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asps. OK, so and that's the point. Now, of course, this is dealing with ancient Sodom and Gomorrah, which was. Uh, two cities, two chief cities among five. It was five in total in which the Most High destroyed. So they all was in cahoots and doing the same type of activities. But Sodom and Gomorrah was the two chief cities. Okay, and it was known for that for for the sexual immorality and engaging in the same sex lifestyle. You know. So the, the Heavenly Father took those cities out. And so here it's saying, and this is to Esau Edom. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom. You know, meaning they draw roots. They, they plant roots in Sodom. Their vine goes back to Sodom. So your vine is where you draw sustenance. And then it, that's why it goes on to say, and of the fields of Gomorrah. Yeah, they produce the fruit of Gomorrah. You know, your fields is where your fruit is, your crops. So, right, this is sexual immoral um, capital of the world right here in America, sexual immorality. The capital is here in America. All right. And so. Um, oh, so like, let me. Fit this for the. Okay. So, so lucky for that. Yeah, and so that's that's what the scripture is saying. Now, concerning the dude, we'll jump over to Isaiah chapter 3, verse 9. It says, The show of their continents doth witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Right, and, and they're, they're proud and bo boisterous. You know, flamboyant. They want you to know 
that this is what I do and you bet not say nothing against it because society, they're backed by society. All right. Society backs them up. So they, they, they just fully into and, and, you know, dead set in their ways of wickedness, their crimes against humanity, their crimes against nature, their, their own very nature. But it says again, Isaiah three and nine, the show of their continents doth witness against them. Um, and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul. You understand? Because we went into the law yesterday. We read about how, you know, that is an abomination and they shall surely be put to death. And their own blood is going to be on their hands, but. Right. See, the times that we're living in, this, these times of judgment, your your soul is up for, uh, well, e either to, to be lost or to be kept. The spirit is eternal. The, the soul can be destroyed. And that's what um, Matthew chapter 10 and 28 warned us of. It says to fear not him who can only destroy the body. The scripture says fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. So at the end of these, we at the end of this chain of darkness, which is our reincarnation. See, we reincarnate with the same souls, but we're at the end of reincarnation on this side before we go into the Hamasiakian era, that, that golden era of righteousness. See, for, for us, the Hebrew Israelites, this is it. You know, so either you make it as one of the elect and you get to preserve your soul or you die here on this side. And then you're going to have to be, you know, you're going to have to come back in righteousness with a brand new soul. But it says here, woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves now that fits right in right in line with what was spoken in romans 1 and 27 all right now again it says woe unto their soul for they have rewarded evil unto themselves so then what, what did it say in romans 1 and 27 as it said here in uh isaiah the third chapter that they rewarded evil unto themselves so this is Romans 1 and 27. And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burn in their lust one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. Right. They were rewarded with the works of their own hands. Okay. The recompense is the reward. Their works were the errors. Their work was in error. And then it says, which was meat. Right. It was just. It was good. Like if somebody say, that's good for you. Meaning you got what you deserve. And that's what it's saying. You know, the recompense of their error, which was meat. Which was good for them. That's good for you. Like somebody say, oh, that's good for your ass. You know, it's what you deserve. The recompense of that error in which they deserved. Which is, yeah, you seeing these viruses popping up. These third world, third country, uh, well, yeah, third world viruses that's supposed to be unheard of here in America. They just popping back up like the polio. You know, the polio is now, you know, we got to be on lookout for polio. So you got the MPOX, you still got the CV19. Now they're throwing polio out there at us. It's, and it's going to only get worse. All right. But uh, yeah, y'all still um, going to continue to believe in the deception of this devil. Let me let me go to uh Second Thessalonians, the second chapter. And the heavenly father showing you he ain't with that, and y'all gonna continue 
to, to tell these lies and allow yourself to be told lies just to fulfill your own naughty, nasty, disgusting little lust here in the in the in the earth. I didn't put that. Here in the flesh. All right, so I'm going to jump down to the point here. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Um, we'll start at verse 9. All right. I'm going to get 8. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. All right. And that wicked is the same wicked that's running the world right now today, because we are in the revised Roman empire. What was Paul at the time when he wrote these epistles, he was in the Roman empire. All right. Under Esau Edom. So now we in these last days find ourselves in the revised Roman Empire, the end of this, all of this madness. All right. So it says here in verse nine, even him who's coming is after the working of Satan. So this is who we are dealing with. We're dealing with the great Satans, the children of Satan. They stand for everything that is against the law, statutes and commandments of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. This is why if you speak the truth of righteousness and in righteousness for righteousness sake, you get ostracized and then ultimately you'll be uh, persecuted. This is, this is how America rewards truth and righteousness. All right. But if you want to go, you know, with this evil that's present, you want to you want to join in one of the acronyms and, and join the acronym community. Well, you receive that love, but just know that that love is temporary and that love is vain. You know. Love is of no use if there's no substance to it, if it's not, you know, rooted in a, in, a, in a place of truth. You know, that love is fickle and vain. And so that's what people are selling their souls for, this fickle, vain, weak, paper-thin love. This is want to be accepted. Oh, it's follow me. Oh, how many likes? Oh, and if they don't get this this adoration and this, this um, what's the term? Uh justification or um, validation, they don't get that adoration and validation, they'll kill themselves. You've seen it. And if it ain't to that extreme, they'll go into these deep, dark depressions. You know, because they, they've um, grasped onto something that's not real, that's it's a deception. And see, how shy he gives us that fullness to where even though here it is, we're catching hell. But we can't do without it. What are we going to do without, you know, if just to go back into the world? What, the, what? There's nothing in the world to do. You know? Yeah, we, we when you experience the fullness of your house shy, you and for the elect, they'll never go back into the world. This vain bullshit, but uh, it says in verse nine, I'm at second Thessalonians chapter two. This is verse nine. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. See, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. So the ones that slated for death, that that deception of unrighteousness, that's they hook, line, and sinker, they own it. Because they don't they won't have any defense. They won't have any defense for it. 
and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. And, and so it's talking about the deceivableness of their very unrighteousness. Being of that community, being a mo. You know, this it's unrighteous, but they didn't deceive you into believing that's glamorous. As well as every other evil, wicked, and contentious, contentious thing that he does. You know, he deceives you by your own very nature, your 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 fleshly nature. And you don't have your how shy, you don't have you, you know, according to 2 Corinthians 10 and 4, the weapons of all warfare are, uh, are not carnal, but spiritual to the pulling down of strongholds. Unless you got them spiritual weapons, you don't stand a chance. All right. Um, Oh, but mighty. So like I was thinking about that. Yeah, the weapons of all warfare are not carnal, but mighty. So I'm going to bring that out just to be on point. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. For the weapons of all warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai to the pulling down of strongholds. Right. The same strongholds that he attacks with his deceivableness of unrighteousness. He's going for the strongholds because he understands the flesh. He understands human nature. You know, when you look at that's why it was recorded when Yahweh Shai was tempted. How did Satan come at him? By way of the flesh. I know you hungry. Turn that rock into bread, you know, to satisfy the flesh, the hunger, to feed the, the body. So, and they're coming the same way that the time of Jacob's trouble, leading, leading up into that hour of temptation, those same temptations are going to be used. Your, your very nature will be used against you. And for those of you who, who've been leaning on your nature, you're done. For those of us who've been leaning on faith and, in, you know, on the spirit. See, we have something spiritual, something tangible to fall back on. But a lot of you people won't have any hope. Because all you've been doing is catering to the flesh. You know, and Galatians 6 and 7 says, be not deceived. For the Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You know, so you heard the guy. He's talking about this is a, a nasty virus. Right. Fitting for a nasty act. See, they're under the deception. They think that they can so Sick, sickness, nastiness, and vileness, and then they're supposed to reap health. And you see, I tell you, he's showing his little jump picks and shit. You're supposed to sow in filth and and you know this disgustingness, but reap health and wealth and you know just vibrance of life, and it don't work that way. It don't work that way. No, yeah, you, you, as the scripture says, you got the reward of your own hands, your, your own works. You know, you got the reward of your own hands. So, um, again, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Right. Homosexuals going to be put to death. Oh, screw you, nigga. And F you and F your mama and all this filth, firm, filth, filth and all. You know, just for telling them the truth. And you get cursed out. You, you have them get in your face, want to fight. Because 
you tell them the truth. And so because they have not the love of the truth, the most I gave them over to that deceivableness of unrighteousness. So again, verse 10, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. So these people, because of their stubbornness, rebellion, to receive the love of the truth, well, the Most High got them under strong delusion. So they believe in the deceptions that <laughs> these devils, the powers that be, are putting out. And they're, they're, they're falling victim to their own foolishness. As Paul stated, the recompense of their error that was meat. They're falling to, yeah, you're not going to get around the, the uh, law of so, uh, reaping and sowing. Sowing and reaping. You're not going to get around that. You see? The recompense of their error that was meat. And here it says, uh, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. So this is your reward. Don't sit there and cry on the video. This is your reward. That's your consolation. And then you heard him at the beginning of the video. Oh, please not me. Please not me. Or, or you yeah, not me or something. Why not you? Yeah, the Heavenly Father is dealing in the earth right now. And people are going to receive for the, the very wickedness that they've sown into this earth. So, yeah, don't cry. Shalom.